So it's a revamp of Made in China, a big part of China's plan for economic success. So let's discuss the effort with Stephen Gu. He's a consultant who helps businesses looking to expand into U.S. or China markets. He's joining us live from Atlanta. Stephen, here in the West, Made in China products have basically had this reputation for being cheap. Now that's changing. Talk to us about this transformation. Is it happening rapidly enough? I think it is happening, definitely happening. Um, uh, you know, uh, China, uh, it used to be manufacture all those low cost products. And uh, now uh, we are manufacturing the uh, high technology products, uh, satellites, high speed railways, uh, lots of high technology uh, products. Yeah, in fact, uh, with the Belt and Road Initiative, you see a lot of this uh, being transported elsewhere. Talk to me about how difficult, though, this is to change people's minds or their perceptions when it comes to Chinese brands. Honestly, I think this is very difficult to, um, because this is almost like a psychological thing, right? Um, to relate the low cost to the poor quality. So, um, uh, unfortunately, China was, uh, was fall under this trap. China was known for the low cost manufacturing hub for the past several decades. Um, so, uh, the, because China's reputation of the low cost manufacturer have people were intended to relate the any products made in China to a low quality or poor quality products. So this, uh, this really makes the branding opportunity very really hard. Um, once this misconception get into people's mind, it will be very hard to, to get it removed. And on, on the second, on, on the other hand, the Chinese company did not do a very good job um, fighting this kind of issue, and they did not do a good job establishing a good brand or a better image. Um, think about it, in U.S., how many, there's only only few Chinese brands that are well known to the U.S. public. Maybe Lenovo, maybe Hire, maybe Huawei, or maybe Tencent or Alibaba, uh, very few brands. Uh, so uh, Chinese companies, they are good at manufacturing uh, the products, but they are not very good or they do not have the you know, skills and the expertise to establish a good brand, especially international recognized brand. So um, I think there's still a long way to go. Yeah, and of course then there comes the marketing promotions, all of that too. Uh, Chinese leaders have said the country has an innovation problem. It's trying to foster that environment, even making new rules to protect intellectual property and ideas. Talk to me about how important this component is. Well, intellectual, pro intellectual property is the foundation of innovation in our economy. It incentivizes the discovery and innovation by providing the creator with the opportunity uh, to benefit from its uh, creative work. Uh, in exchange, the creative work is made public to the others, um, so the others may build upon the, build upon the products and benefit from, uh, benefit from the work of the original products, original creators. So the, the law protecting intellectual property will also reduce the transaction cost between the creator and the industry by providing the information of innovation uh, without jeopardizing the ownership of the idea. So it is a critical important. All right, Stephen Gu joining us from Atlanta. He's with Pershing Yokely and Associates. Thanks so much.